Hello everyone, welcome back to the Crafty Concepts with Erin YouTube channel. Today we are celebrating a little milestone I've hit here on the YouTube platform. My channel has officially hit that 10,000 subscriber mark, which is really kind of fun. And I have all of you to thank for that. So very sincere thank you from the bottom of my heart. I am just humble and blessed to have the opportunity to share this awesome scrapbooking and card making hobby with all of you. And nothing makes me happier than reading a comment from one of you saying you watched a video and you were very inspired to get into your craft room and create something uh, beautiful. So that just truly makes my day. And I love reading your comments. Some of you have been with me for since the very beginning. I started my channel a couple years ago and it's just really fun to have the opportunity to connect and chat with you in the comments. So thank you for taking the time to do that. But I have several of my YouTuber friends celebrating along with me today. So be sure to watch along. Uh, they are all picking a layout of mine and scrap lifting it. So it'll be fun. I have no idea what layouts they're choosing and it'll just be really neat to see their creative spin on it. We also have a giveaway to celebrate or I have a giveaway and stay tuned to the very end of my video to find out what that is and how you can enter and have a chance at that uh, um, goody that I'm giving away. I'll give you a hint. It's a stamp set. It's one of my favorites that I feel like everybody should have in their craft room. So without further ado, let's turn the camera around and get into it. The collection I'm using for my scrap lift today is the Crisp Air Paper Pack from Close to My Heart. You can see it's a very fall inspired collection. I love blue and orange together. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. You can see we have some fall leaves. They're double sided. So I have each shape, uh, paper turned over so you can see all the patterns at once. But I love this sapphire blue with the little leaves on it, the pumpkins. We have kind of a plaid paprika. Here's a little splatter and then a patchwork quilt kind of look. So I'll be bringing in some digital cuts as well. In the July through September seasonal catalog on page 27, we have some of the crisp air accessories. There's dots, coordinating cardstock, the pocket cards, which I'm sure I'll be pulling in some of those, but there is a digital art collection and these are SVG. So you can use these with whatever cutting machine you have, but check out that layout. I always like the digital collections because they usually have cards and a scrapbook layout. That's super easy to put together and personalize, but I'm going to be using some of these pumpkins and I think this title as well. So let me get this cleared up and we'll jump right in. This is going to be a single page layout so I'm bringing in one verse mat and I believe I want to build this on a sheet of white daisy cardstock. I do have two photos. This is my youngest son Clayton and we like to grow pumpkins every year in the garden and he was helping to harvest the pumpkins and bring them in so we can use them to decorate around the house. For my layout, I'm definitely drawn to these three pattern papers. My son is wearing blue. He's got a blue plaid shirt and then his jeans. And then of course, the orange and the pumpkins. Those are what I really want to stand out in the photos. So I was thinking of doing something like this. But then I started realizing that my embellishments are going to be pumpkins. I'm gonna have a lot of orange pumpkins and they won't stand out very well against this paprika background. I pulled this pattern paper from the current Mixin collection. So we have this one on one side and there's kind of a burlappy look on the other side. Burlappy, is that a word? You like that? But that is going to be a great background and then my orange pumpkins will stand out much better. I'll go ahead and get these two pattern papers trimmed down. I'll be right back. For this piece, I've trimmed it to six and a half by nine inches, and this one is four and a half by 12. I'm going to position this one on the bottom, leaving just about a half inch of the white showing, and I am going to finish these off with a little bit of mocha ink around the edge here. It's kind of funny. I've been scrap lifting myself quite a bit lately. We turn to Pinterest and Instagram and all sorts of places for inspiration, but sometimes it's nice just to look at your own albums, find a layout that really jumps out at you, and recreate it. With different photos, pattern papers, and embellishments, it's going to take on a whole different look. So I have these on my layout. I want to overlap them just a bit. And then to finish off the transition piece, this is a zip strip or a branding strip. I'm going to put that right across the center there. My photos are three and a half by five plus the white border. So they're a little bit bigger with that mat. And I'm bringing in my all purpose mat here. We're going to do some ink blending on our die cuts. 
So I have the title piece and all the pumpkins. We also have the you know inner portion of the title, a couple vines, and then I'm going to use my pickup tool. This is super handy for picking up little tiny paper pieces. I'm just dry fitting these and I will adhere them off camera so you don't have to watch me do that whole process because you know it, they are tiny pieces and it does take just a bit to get those in position. And then for my pumpkin layer that's going to go on the bottom but it overlaps these pumpkins so we need to adhere those first. I have a little shortbread ink and I'm inking up with my little craft brush here the top layer of this pumpkin just to give it a little bit more interest and help bring that flat Cricut cut to life. You can choose any color you want for pumpkin there, but I thought that this was a nice combination. And you have these teeny little stems. Now this is the Barely Art Precision Craft Glue, and I do really like this glue. I get it on Amazon. This is perfect for these tiny pieces because the tip is super fine and it doesn't clog, so it makes the, it perfect for this application. I really appreciate the layering that goes into these digital cuts. I think they look really fun. So this little stem here had a couple layers, then you can slide that into place and it really finishes that off nicely. Isn't that cute? I love this title. It's gonna look great on the layout. Let's go ahead and add a little treatment to our die cuts here. Rather than inking these, I'm actually going to sand them to give them a distressed look. I chose to ink up the shortbread one because that's a lighter color and it wouldn't have been as great of a contrast with the white on the shortbread, but this darker shade of paprika, you'll really be able to appreciate that. So I'm just using a nail file, sanding all of those edges, and then we can use our glue to adhere this to the base layer. So again, this is paprika and I've cut the base layer in nectarine. This would be a great layout to recreate with floral embellishments. Rather than the pumpkins, you just have, you know, a cluster of flowers and leaves, or you could even do circles, tags up top, uh, gears, hexagons. I mean, really anything that is going to represent and tell the story behind the photos that you are documenting. You can also get really creative with your pumpkin colors too. I mean, there's green pumpkins, white pumpkins, all sorts of colors. So depending on the look you're going for, you can cut those out and you, maybe even pattern paper would be fun too. So we've got all of our pieces adhered together. I'm going to layer my title over the base of the photos and then I'm just deciding which pumpkins I want where. So I'm gonna place those two up top. I'm gonna layer this one behind my title. And then we have these fun little vine, pumpkin vines. And you can see in the picture, there's pumpkin vines all over the ground. So I thought that that was you know, definitely something I wanted to incorporate onto the page. In the layout I'm scrap lifting, I have my journaling on a little stamped card on the left hand side. So I thought I'd thumb through the pocket cards to see if there's any journaling cards I can use. So I just like to look through here. Oh, that might be perfect. I like that. So we'll put that aside. This is kind of cool. You know, I look for pieces to layer. You can fussy cut these. Lots of things you can do with the pocket cards. I like that one. And then maybe this gingham one, that might be cute. We'll pull those out, set these aside. Now I do want to add this paprika plaid paper to the bottom right hand corner. I'm going to put a dovetail in the end here, just cutting up from the center and then each side. And you'll see this really uh, offsets that paprika pumpkin in the upper right hand or left hand corner. So that creates this diagonal line that just draws your eye across the layout. Now I chose this one because it coordinates very well with my fall bucket list pocket card. All the colors in the stripes on this card match the word fall in the other card. So I thought that that would be a nice addition for my second banner element. I'm going to layer over the first one here. So I like to make, you know, one little bit longer and then this one's going to be a little bit shorter. We'll slide that up under there and get those layered together. Yeah, I like it. Now I thought we could use this to layer under and introduce more of the green, but let's try the gingham. No, no, I don't want that. I want this one. And yeah, that looks really cute. That complements the layout nicely, but let's see this side. Yeah, I like this color better. So we will go with this one and tuck that underneath the title there. And then I have a little piece of paper on my uh, inspiration layout back here, a little pa uh, pattern paper. This is just a scrap. The other one went all the way down to the base layer, but since you can't see it behind the pocket cards, let's utilize that scrap, right? 
I went ahead and got everything adhered off camera. There is a little scrap of that pumpkin vine. I'm going to tuck that in right there. And then I have the crisp air enamel dots. These are really cute because there's different um, shapes and colors, everything to complement this paper pack. So I want to use blue to add more of that blue color up to the top of the layout where we really didn't have any. So it's subtle, but I think it makes a big difference. And I'm going to add a few down to this lower cluster right here. I have the Le Pen journaling pen in the color sepia and I thought it'd be fun to switch it up and use this instead of like my traditional black or you know gray and you guys these are good journaling pens they're nice and juicy I really like the way they write and they come in lots of different colors so that's always kind of fun to switch it up on your projects from time to time. In addition to the obvious who, what, when, where, I am adding a little tidbit about the Cinderella pumpkins and how they're my favorite pumpkins that we grow every year. Just like the inspiration layout, I am going to add a little hand-drawn kind of doodly line to get your lines fairly straight. I mean, I don't want them perfect, so I don't want to use a ruler, but keep your wrist and your hand kind of locked and then pull your arm back towards you and that'll help you get pretty straight lines. And we're just going to turn this, having it on the verse mat makes it easy to kind of manipulate our layout and turn that each time. And then I will add little swirlies around each of the sides. So we'll put one down here and then I'm gonna do kind of offset on the diagonal and then one over here and then again we'll go up top on a diagonal line with this little swirly cue. I accidentally bent the corner of that pocket card but um, I'm gonna roll with it so I'm gonna roll it up around my pen and yeah I quite like it. Let me hold this up so you can get a closer look at all the details here and then I'll bring in my inspiration layout so we can kind of compare and contrast the differences but really I followed it pretty closely obviously switching up the papers and embellishments. Again, this is the layout for my very first YouTube video. The video, not so great. The layout I actually like. You can see I used pumpkins instead of the circles here. And in the original layout, I ran the zip strip across the bottom of the photos, giving the appearance of smaller photos, but they are actually the same size. I know you're all curious about the giveaway, so I have the background elements stamp set. And this may not look like much to you, but these background and texture stamp sets are awesome. This one's from the core catalog. This is a 2022-2023 close to my heart core catalog and I absolutely love these stamps. They add so much interest to your scrapbook layouts and your cards and I feel like everybody needs this in their craft room. All you have to do to be entered in the giveaway is leave a comment down below and in one week I will draw a name at random and announce the winner and you have one week after that to contact me via email and claim your prize. There are some guidelines and rules, so be sure to refer to those in the description box below. Don't forget to check out the videos from my crafty friends celebrating along with me today. Again, you guys, I cannot say thank you enough. I appreciate you so much and really enjoy having the opportunity to share and inspire you. See you next time.